welcome back. Hello everybody, it's old Kevy boy. Um, today, I want to uh, first of all thank everybody for going down to Bencraft and buying those uh, pre-bankruptcy borsalinos. Uh, thank you for helping Steve and Bencraft Hats. They are sitting on this gold mine of uh, pre-bankruptcy borsalinos. For those of you who don't know, uh, Borsalino is uh, my favorite hat brand, and um, they had a bankruptcy in 2017. Uh, the guy who was in charge was embezzling money, and they wound up having to close down and shut down everything. Um, when they got back into business again, uh, they sold and everything, they stopped making their own felt. Uh, they used to be famous for making their own felt bodies, and their felt was magical. Uh, it was something that couldn't be described. Uh, you could roll them, you could shape them on your head, you know, do a teardrop, do a pork pie, and then just snap it right back, and then the original shape will come back. You could put them in your pocket, you could do whatever you want with them. They always come back to shape, because the felt is... It's almost like a, a secret, secret recipe. It was made from wild hair and nutria, and it was the very, very best cutting zero corners called Quality Superior. After they came back from their bankruptcy, they stopped making their own felt. They started farming it out to other people because it's way cheaper, like everybody else does, like all the other hat companies. I don't know about a Kubra. A Kubra's felt, you can tell, is special and it's unique to them. Uh, but everybody else, they, they buy their felt from suppliers. Um, so. Any Borsalino that comes in this year, last year, the last few years, since 2017, is, it's not the real deal, it's crap. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, there are people out there who've spent five, six hundred dollars on Borsalinos. It's a good hat, okay, but uh, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same. Um, these are the kind of things that shop owners don't really like to say. You know, we say it to each other behind closed doors, you know, like, oh, they're, they're, they've gone to the, the you know, crappy, uh, no good anymore. We don't tell that to customers. Um, we tell that to each other, you know, when customers are not around. Um, but I'm a little different. I'm, I'm not that kind of uh, team player kind of guy. I tell my customers what the real deal is from the other side of the counter, and I don't care because I don't have a boss. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, you know, um, you know, what, what's going wrong with the Stetsons for the last five, ten years, or what's going wrong with Borsalino. Um, that's the truth, and you guys deserve to know it. So, if you could find what's called a pre-bankruptcy Borsalino, something that is the real deal, and is also what they call quality superior, that will make it even like you knowing this is the best of the best, then you're really, really hooked up, okay? There is nothing like it. The felt is not the same now. Um, you could get 100% beaver from this guy and that guy and think your hat is the best and the best, but they're all different. Every felt is different. Me, personally, I like this felt. I think it's as good as it gets. It maxes out at a certain point that, like, uh, you know, like people ask me, what's better, the beaver, the, the pre bankruptcy beaver or just a regular pre-bankruptcy quality superior. They're both superiors, but the beaver costs like an extra $200. They're the same because when it gets to that level to me, it maxes out. It's perfect. It doesn't get any better than that. It lasts forever. It holds its shape forever, basically, unless you really, really abuse it. All you have to do is flip your brim up, hang the thing up, and that's it. You don't have to really take care of these hats. Um, I have customers who roll them up really sloppily in their bags and their luggage and like really wrinkly and they come to me once a year to put them back into shape. And it's okay, I know before they come to me that this like rolled up horrible little ball of felt is going to come back to a nice new looking hat because it's a Borsalino quality superior from before the bankruptcy. I know what it is already. Those felts are always in shape and they always look good and they're always different, okay? So that's it. Um, I'm not giving my opinion uh, all the time, but this is something that I really must give my opinion on because uh, it's very important. 
Um, these hats are disappearing. I actually thought they were gone. Uh, obviously, there are some people who are hoarding some or they haven't been able to sell them for certain reasons. Steve is a great shop in New York who's got this huge competitor next to him, Borsellino Shop, who's basically selling 99% to the Jewish religious community, all big black hats. Everything they sell is, you know, three and a half inches or bigger. Um, and, you know, big tall crowns, stiff. It's not the same kind of Borsellinos you want. They took all of his Jewish religious business, and he's kind of hurting now because he's not online. His hats are not online, and nobody knows that he has these hats. The only way to find out is through me. Really, it's true through me or through word of mouth, you have to call Steve at Bencraft Hats, okay? Just look up Bencraft Hats, get their phone number and ask for Steve. Don't ask, don't talk to Morris or Zev or one of the other guys. You wanna to talk to Steve and you tell him that Kevin sent you or that uh, you're here because Kevin's videos recommended it or you just say you're one of Kevin's customers. You have to mention my name. He's gonna tell you what they have in Quality Superior what they have, and they're all, you tell them, I'm looking for uh, superior quality and I'm looking for pre-bankruptcy, none of the other stuff. He'll tell you what they have. They have Como's, many colors. They have some Alessandria's, some films. They have some three inch brims that are open crown, three inch brims that come with a Como crown, with a lower crown and a one inch band. They have um, Antonio's with a welted edge with a short brim, a really cool. That's one of my favorites. I have a couple of Antonio's. I love those. This is an Anello. Yeah, Antonio is the same hat as this, but it's a bigger, taller, baggier crown. Where this is, you know, more like their their modern Borsellino classical crown. The Antonio comes with a big, baggy one that you could turn into a pork pie, a teardrop, a center crease, a diamond on the fly. Wear it any way you want. They make great pork pies. This is the Anello. It'll do it too, but not as nice because it's got more of a tapered crown. So what today's video is all about? It's not all about. Ben Craft having uh, the pre-bankruptcy Borsellinos. It's about all the people who just called up and are going to maybe experience their very first Borsellino, their first real Borsellino, okay? Quality, superior, pre-bankruptcy. If you've never had this kind of hat, it's very different. It's gonna feel different when you get it. Uh, don't expect the same kind of experience. A lot of hats, you're gonna feel that they're stiff and snappy and stiff and when they get soft they've already lost their body and they're shot and they need to be stiffened these are different they're totally different they're already soft they're pre they're, they, they're not hit with tons of stiffener they are natural and soft you know if you could see how you can move this felt it's very very soft you could shape it this is why those old hats in the old movies look different they had these big kind of teardrop shaped by hand like this because the crowns were big and baggy and they were soft. So, what you're going to get is a new kind of experience. You're going to feel a hat that's really, really light. It's going to feel thinner and it's going to feel much, much softer. Okay? The way these hats work is, okay, no matter what's steamed into it, that hat will always pop back to that shape. Okay? I've not, I haven't worked on this. This is the, hat, the shape that's been steamed into this hat. So if I just push down gently, look, it's gonna snap back into that shape, okay? That's what's right now steamed into it. A couple of pinches and kind of like a sloppy teardrop, okay? All right, so if I take that, if I wanna do a different shape, let's say, it's okay. I could cattle increase it, okay? I could pork pie it, I could do whatever I want. As long as I'm not steaming it in, it's gonna have no effect on it. Okay, all you have to do is just pop it out and feel for your shape, it'll come right back again. That's it. So in other words, you got your shape that your hat is steamed into, okay, like my black hat here is a center crease, okay? When I press down, this is what's very you know, gently, it pops back into its, that's what's blocked into it, okay? Doesn't mean I have to wear it like this. Let me give it a little bit more light. So let's say I wanted to do like a diamond or something, you know, a three finger crease, I could just do that, okay? If I wanted to do something like a teardrop, what I can do, I could just take the regular hat, put it on my head, and then just teardrop it behind my head like that. You know, I've got 
got the teardrop there. You go back, fix it up. Okay. No problem, there's my teardrop. Pop it up, bam. Whatever's steamed in there is locked in. So if you get a hat, let's say you get a classical or a coma or a film and that's got this shape locked into it, don't worry, this is my original classical shape, okay? I never move that. That will always come back. Okay, don't worry about it. Go move it. Do what you want, but don't steam it in. And don't do it while it's wet or freshly steamed. And none of those creases will be permanent. You can do whatever you want to this hat now, okay? It doesn't matter. You can also do this. Only when the hat is dry. Brim down. Open it up. This goes for any quality superior porcelino. Not the really thick velours and stuff like that, but all of this stuff, okay? You fold it in half like this. Okay, and then like that. So it's like a, a U shape. Then we get a roll. I'm not folding, lopping it into quarters. I'm rolling it very carefully and roundly. See that? Everything is round, those lines. There's no pinches. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick that in my coat pocket, my sleeve. I could put it in my briefcase. I could even put it inside of a shoe box. Two of them will fit in, a, in like a Nike box. And then put that inside of your, your um, when you pack and you go on vacation, put that right in your luggage, it'll be safe, okay? You can't crush this, you can't sit on this or put lots of weight on it or jam it into your pocket really tight, okay? It's rollable, but not smushable, okay? Okay. You open it, you flip the brim up. I'm not worried, everything is fine, trust me. I've done this over a thousand times for this hat, literally more. You just touch, you find what was there, pinches to you. You're very gentle. It'll fall right back. That's my original shape. Okay. Your wing cord works like a slip knot. It's like a noose kind of a thing. It's a basically a loop around a loop. Okay. So you just make that loop bigger, 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 bigger. Put it around the crown. Okay. And then you put it underneath. With your fingernail, you just kind of get it underneath the band. So it's under the ribbon, okay? And that little black button, one way is gonna tighten it, the other way will loosen it. You put the button somewhere near the band, that's all it has to be in that area, okay? And then you, you pull it back and tighten it so it's not all loose up there. Just pull it back, it's tight. All right, not too tight because that will actually tighten the fit of the hat just until it, it kind of stops. That's it, your hat is fine. I've rolled this a thousand, thousand times, probably three or five thousand times. I used to roll it like five times a day, you know, for customers, okay, down. You might want not want to do this with your new Borsalino, but, you know, it's like I would, you know. Um, they're fun. You don't have to roll it, but what you can do is you can play with the shape, okay? You can do whatever you want there, teardrop it, you know, and when you pop it out, it's fine. Now remember, Borsalino, it's a little bit different type of an animal. It's like a, um, it's a soft hat that doesn't get soft and fail when it's soft. It's sort of already soft, okay? And it behaves while it's soft. The felt itself is such a good quality that it doesn't require all of that stiffener to control it, okay? This hat feels so soft and, and just so luxurious and like really, I don't know what the word is, fine. It's just like really thin yet like dense, but with the softest texture, like the purest beaver and it's feather, feather light. It's just so hard to explain the, the, the feeling. Um, as you go back in time, they get softer and lighter. Also, when you go lighter in color, the hats will feel softer. My black Borsalino has got more body to it because there is more dyes in there, more harsher dyes. Okay, your white, your light gray, pearl gray, and tan and silver belly hats are gonna feel softer. You're gonna feel more luxurious. So if you got a pearl gray or a camel, anything like that, expect super luxury. If you get something like navy or black, it'll feel like that too, but a little bit more snappy and a little more body to it. Both ways feel great, trust me, trust me. It's nice to have just a tiny bit more snap, you know, yet it's still feather light and everything. 
And it's also nice for them to just feel like really buttery, buttery soft too. They do not fail on you at all, okay? Now, how should you shape your hat? For me, okay, what I like to do, I tend to like to make a center crease and then I like to shape it on the fly. To me, Borsellinos are, are center crease hats. Um, except I feel the Alessandria and the film, those two hats do better as a, as a teardrop, okay? I love the Alessandria in a teardrop and I also love the film in a teardrop. I think those two hats take some of the nicest teardrops of any hats in the world. They just have the perfect crown. I mean, something like a Hoofwood hat, they also take gorgeous teardrops because they have these kind of shapes, these vintage crowns, you know. Um, but, you know, most of us are not really privy to hats, you know, custom hats like that. Um, he makes gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And um, the reason why is because he does the same things with his crowns. They're wide, and you see how this crown goes up instead of like a letter A? That's why it has that old time look and the teardrop looks so big and wide in the back. Instead of one of those little neat like whippy teardrops you see today. Um, it's the width of the crown and the fact that the body goes up instead of like this. Um, you can see this one is a slightly more modern hat. It's got a little bit more taper on the top here. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at this hat. This is. This is like one of the nicest uh, Borsellinos I've ever seen. It comes from that old, old period. Look how clean it is. This is one of the best. It's real silk. This is from the old gangster days, you know, from those old film noir movies, George Raft and Bogey and stuff. This is from those days and stuff. Um, and it's perfect. There's not one bite on here. There's no flaws, there's no moths, nothing. It's perfect. And the felt itself is even nicer than the last one I had. It's just gorgeous. It's silver belly, actually. It's not light gray. I thought it was light gray. But I saw it this morning in the light. I pulled up the uh, shades and I examined it. And I was like, that is not gray. The photos I originally got, I thought were gray. And then when I looked at the hat, it looked gray also. But it's kind of color shifting. It's like... You can see, obviously, it's silver belly here. But in certain lights, it seemed to look a little bit more gray. Like, it's hard to explain. It goes more towards a blue shift sometimes, and other times more towards a yellow shift, like tan, other times more kind of slate or granite looking. But uh, this is a gorgeous Alessandria. It came with this shape in it, which is really nice. I don't know if I really want to get rid of that shape. It's just so authentic and old looking. Let's see what we can do with this baby. First thing, I'm just going to open the crown a little and get rid of some wrinkles. I'm keeping it far away from the sweatbands. If you steam a vintage hat, keep the steam away from the sweatband. Steam could go through the felt and burn the sweatband and shrink it. Because sometimes sweatbands are dehydrated. You don't know they're dehydrated, but then when the steam hits it, it just zaps all the rest of the moisture out of it in like a split second. So, that does happen. So when you're steaming, Try to keep the steam away from here and keep it up here so it doesn't bake that leather sweatband. The stinger. Turn of the stinger.